All right, in this video, I want to talk about uh, solving equations by factoring. All right, so in order to do that, we need to make note of, of the following. All right, so we have this note that if the product of factors is zero, so in other words, if you have a whole bunch of things we multiply together and that product is equal to zero, then at least one of those factors must be zero, right? Because zero times whatever else is going to be equal to zero, right? So in math symbols, it would look like uh, the um, the following. If a times b is equal to zero, then a has to equal zero, or b could equal zero, right? Either one. Because if a was equal to zero, you'd have zero times b, which would still be zero. And if b was equal to zero, then you could have a times zero, which is still equal to zero, right? So uh, that's that's kind of the idea that if we know that we've got things multiplied together and that product is equal to zero, then um, each one of these things, each one of these factors, uh, can be equal to zero, and that's going to allow us to actually solve uh, equations. Kind of nice. For example, let's look at uh, this first one. All right, so we have an equation, right? Because we have uh, 2x minus 3 times x plus 5, and that is equal to zero. This is an equation. The left-hand side already has some factors, right? 2x minus 3 and x plus 5. So everything's been factored on the left-hand side already. And this product between 2x minus 3 and x plus 5, you multiply those together, that's supposed to equal 0, right? That's what's over here on the right-hand side. So the only way that can be true is if each one of these factors is equal to 0. So we would have 2x minus 3 could equal 0, right? Because if that's equal to 0, then... Um, that times x plus 5 is going to be equal to 0, right? Uh, or we could also have x plus 5 is equal to 0. So that's just following from that note that I had up just a second ago. We take each factor and set each factor equal to 0. And then we solve each one of these little equations, right? This is going to be 2x equals 3, so x equals 3 halves. All right, and then if you do the second one here, you have x equals negative 5. So there are two solutions to this particular equation. X could be 3 halves or X could be negative 5. Right? And, and think about that. You could take, take, the, take X equals negative 5. If you take negative 5 and plug it in for X, then we would have 2 times negative 5, which is negative 10. Negative 10 minus 3, which is negative 13. All right? so, that'd be, so this one would be negative 13. But this one over here would be negative 5 plus 5 would be 0. So you'd have negative 13 times 0, which is indeed a true statement. It's still equal to 0, right? That's still true. So x equals negative 5 does indeed make this equation true. And it's the same idea if you use 3 halves. If you take 3 halves and plug it in for x here, you're going to have uh, 3 minus 3, which goes to 0. Right? If you plug 3 halves in over here, then you're going to have uh, this whole thing goes to 13 halves. And then you're going to have 0 times 13 halves, and again, that is equal to 0. So 3 halves is also a solution to this particular equation. So now we've gone to types of equations that can have more than one solution to them. Right? This is an example of one that has two solutions. So x could be 3 halves or x could be negative 5. Alright, so if you've got uh, a product equal to 0, you can set each of the factors equal to 0 and solve each one individually. So let's try another one. Alright, so let's try this one. Now, this one uh, is um, not factored like we had before. So here's the plan of attack. For nonlinear polynomial equations, we need all the terms of our polynomial to one side of the equal sign and zero on the other. All right? So for example, here we're going to add 6 to both sides to get this to look like x squared plus 7x plus 6 is equal to zero. Right? If you add 6 to both sides, then this is what we'd end up having, right? Now, we want to look at this polynomial over here, that's on this case on the left-hand side, and we want to factor that polynomial. So there's no greatest common factor. The leading coefficient is 1. You've got three terms here. So uh, this, if this is going to factor, we need factors of 6 that add up to 7. All right? Well, that would be 1 and 6. And since this last sign's a plus, the two signs of the binomial both have to be the same sign. Uh, the same sign as the middle term, so they're both pluses here. And then this is still equal to 0, because all we've done was take the left-hand side, x squared plus 7x plus 6, and rewrite it in its factored form, x plus 1 times x plus 6. And so now we have a product equal to 0, so we can set each factor equal to 0. x plus 1 equals 0, x plus 6 equals 0, and we get two solutions. x is negative 1, x is negative 6. 
All right, so that's it. If you take negative 1 or negative 6 uh, and substitute in for x up here in the original equation, you'll get a true statement. All right, you should verify that. All right, let's try one more. All right, 2x squared equals 6x plus 20. So again, we, uh, we want to make sure we get everything written on one side of the equal sign. So 2x squared, I'm going to, I want my, my coefficient of, of x squared here to be positive. That's just what I'd like to do. So I'm going to subtract 6x from both sides, and I'm going to subtract 20 from both sides, and I'm going to make it look like this. All right? You could have just as easily subtracted 2x squared from both sides and, uh, and still been able to solve the problem. All right, so now we look to factor the left-hand side here, and we notice that, oh, look, there's a greatest common factor of 2. So we can take the 2 out, and it leaves us x squared minus 3x minus 10 is equal to 0. And then we look to factor that trinomial inside the parentheses. We notice that the coefficient of the x squared here is a 1, so we need factors of 10 that subtract up to 3. Factors of 10 that subtract up to 3 would be what? 5 and 2. That's right, so we're going to have x, 5 x, 2. Since this last sign was a minus, these two signs in the binomials have to be opposite signs. The sign of the middle term goes to the larger number. So this is x minus 5 and x plus 2. And that's all equal to 0. All right. So now we have uh, three factors to this particular polynomial, right? 2, x minus 5, and x plus 2. But um, notice that we, we're not going to set the 2 equal to 0. You know, now we're supposed to set each of the factors equal to 0, right? But 2 can't equal 0. That doesn't make any sense, right? So we don't, we don't even mess with the 2. In fact, in reality, you could divide both sides of the equation here by 2, and you would just be left with x minus 5, x plus 2 equals 0. Everybody see that? We could just literally divide both sides here by 2 and be left with x minus 5 times x plus 2 equals 0. We're still going to get to the same result here, right? Because we're going to take the x minus 5 and set that equal to 0, that factor equal to 0, and x plus 2, set that factor equal to 0, and you're going to get 5 and negative 2 as the, as the two solutions that we need. If you take 5 or negative 2 and plug it in for x up here in the original equation, then you'll get a true statement. All right, does that make sense? All right, so I do want to mention one more thing here real quick. Uh, as I said a second ago, we could have taken um, our original equation here. We could have actually done at this stage. Let me use a different color. We could have taken this right over here and divided everything by 2 right off the bat and gotten x squared uh, minus 3x minus 10 is equal to 0. Right? Everybody agree? We could have just divided everything by 2, and this would be our new equation, right? And then from here, we would break it down to x minus 5, x plus 2 equals 0, and that's where you'll get your x minus 5 equals 0, x plus 2 equals 0, you still get your 5 and your negative 2, right? We'll just continue going on down to here, right? So the point I want to make is that if your greatest common factor is, is a number, a numerical value, then it's okay to just divide both sides by that numerical value. Right, because that's that doesn't play into um, the solution down here because we're not going to set the factor two equal to zero because that doesn't make any sense. So if you have a a greatest common factor that's a numerical value, then you can just divide everything on both sides of the inequality by that numerical value, and everything's still going to work out fine. Now, having said all that, I want to point out the following situation. All right, so what's the greatest common factor? Uh, for the left-hand side here, right? It's it's x. Okay, so we would actually write this left-hand side as x times x minus five equals zero, right? And then we'd set each factor equal to zero. So you'd have x equals zero, x minus five equals zero. So x equals zero, x equals five. So we have two solutions here, right? Zero or five would be what we're looking for. Okay, now that's because the greatest common factor was a variable, right? The previous, the previous problem, the greatest common factor was a numerical value, it was just the number two, right? And so it, it's okay to divide everything on both sides by um, the numerical value of, of two, right? Because it's the, it, it didn't really play into our our solution. But now back over here, the greatest common factor is x. My general rule of thumb is to never, ever divide by the variable you're trying to solve for. It's not that you can't. 
is that it's too easy to make a mistake and forget something. Right? So I recommend that you do not divide both sides of the equation by the variable you are trying to solve for. Instead, factor it out and set each of your factors equal to zero in the end. All right, so that, does that make sense? All right, so the, the, uh, the rule of thumb, do not divide both sides of an equation by the variable you're trying to solve for because it's too easy to make a mistake. Now, we just solved several equations by factoring and talked about the idea of if you have factors and their product is equal to zero, then you can set each factor equal to zero, and that allows us to solve the equations. Uh, that's all great and everything, except that should open the question of, well, what if, what if uh, there's a polynomial that doesn't factor? Well, for polynomials that do not factor, there are... Uh, and f quite frankly, for polynomials, even if they do factor, there are other methods that will um, allow you to solve for equations, whether they, uh, whether those e polynomial equations factor or not. But it's this idea that I want to make sure you understand that the product of factors, if that is equal to zero, then each factor is set equal to zero. Right? That's the concept I want to make sure you understand. And for equations that do not factor, then later on you'll learn some techniques of how to solve those. All right, that's um, all I have on solving equations by factoring. Uh, study well. Please let me know if you have any questions.